Today we will be talking about the present perfect progressive or the present perfect continuous, el presente perfecto continuo. In this tense, it's similar, hello guys, parecido a lo que estuvimos viendo el martes, si no estuvieron el martes, ya subí el live a YouTube. So, it's, it's based on that, built on that, estamos utilizando aquí todavía el verbo auxiliar have or has, que es a ver, right? I have, you have, he has, hello guys, I have, you have, he has, se va a conjugar igual que el verbo tener, pero aquí lo estamos utilizando para decir a ver, so yo he, tú has, el a, has, for he, she, it, la tercera persona singular. All right, so for today, have, has, we are going to add the word been, been. And I know this is something that people ask me a lot. ¿Qué significa been? Now, been is el pasado participio del verbo ser o estar, el verbo to be. So, been significa sido o estado. Cuando lo vemos en este tiempo, siempre va a ir junto con un verbo en la forma ing. Así que been en este tiempo siempre va a ser estado. Estado. Hello, guys. All right. So, I have been, you have been, he has been, todos con la palabra been, que es el verbo to be, y siempre que juntamos un verbo con el verbo to be, yes, I'm teaching English. So, siempre que juntamos el verbo to be con un verbo de acción, el verbo de acción siempre tiene que ir en la forma ing. So, let's say here that I want to say, he estado trabajando. I have been working. I have been working. Now, vimos el martes, he trabajado, que es I have worked. I have worked, he trabajado. I have been working, he estado trabajando. So, in this tense, ing for all of our actions. Been, and then any ing verb. All right, so, we have here, I have been working. You have been working. He has been working. She has been working. It has been working. We have been working. They have been working. Now, no quieres decir the long E, not been. Been is frijol. This is been. 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 Que es el sonido corto de la I in English. Been. Okay, so, I have been working. Y aquí, guys... Miramos el martes las contracciones, but I'll tell you again, I have, se puede contraer I've, I've been working, you've been working, he's been working, she's been working, it's been working, we've been working, they've been working. Okay, so you can say I have, but probably it's more common in American English to say I've, I've been working. When we say, I've been working, guys, he estado trabajando, casi no se escucha tanto el v, porque está junto con been. I've been working. I've been working. Uh, I saw a question. Uh, hold on. Fresh moon. Fresh moon. So, me preguntó de being, ¿no? Este también es el verbo to be. Pero esta forma es la forma ing del verbo to be. So, se utiliza, por ejemplo, si yo digo, you are being, you are being rude. <laughs> you are being rude or you are being mean. Estás siendo. So, being es siendo y been es sido o estado. Listen to the difference. Been, being, been, being. So, aquí no puede ir being porque está junto con el auxiliar, verbo auxiliar, have, when we have a verb together with have, tiene que estar en el pasado participio, así que utilizamos been. All right, so I have been working. And if we want to say, si lo queremos decir en lo negativo, el negativo siempre va a ser have not. I have not been working. He has not been working. Or we can use the contraction, have not, has not, haven't, hasn't. Haven't. Hasn't. So let's say, no he estado trabajando. I haven't been working. I haven't been working. En la tercera persona singular, he hasn't been working. She hasn't 
been working. Or I can say like no ha estado funcionando, it hasn't been working. De una máquina, the computer hasn't been working, thank you. The TV hasn't been working, my phone hasn't been working, no ha estado funcionando. All right, so have or has in the negative have not o la contracción haven't hasn't is la contracción de has not haven't hasn't haven't hasn't so i haven't you haven't we haven't they haven't and la tercera persona singular he hasn't she hasn't, and it hasn't. It hasn't. Thank you, guys. All right, now, when we want to ask, cuando queremos preguntar, se pone el auxiliar, have or has, antes de, antes de el sujeto. So, have you, has he, has she, has it, have we, have they. So, si quiero preguntar, ¿has estado trabajando? Have you? been working have you been working has she been working ha estado trabajando has it been working ellos han estado trabajando have they been working so basically guys solo estamos moviendo el verbo auxiliar lo demás been y working se queda al final no we're just moving have and has before the subject and that's it so if i want to ask ¿Has estado trabajando? Have you been working? Voy a poner la pregunta porque ahí vamos a poner unas preguntas más. Ok. ¿Has estado trabajando? Have you been? Siempre been en este tiempo. Y el verbo ING. Have you been working? Have you been working? ¿Has estado trabajando? Y si quiero preguntar, like, ¿a dónde has estado trabajando? Where have you been working? Where have you been working? Where have you been working? Sí, y si es tercera persona singular, has she been working? Where has she been working? Where has she been working? Have they been working? Have they been working? Where have they been working? All right, queen. Okay, uh, queen is... I have an English. I don't know. I, I didn't understand. <laughs> All right. Where have you been working? Ahora, I can ask them in cuánto tiempo. Cuánto tiempo? In English, cuánto tiempo is how long. How long have you been working? I said you like after we ask, like where do you work or where have you been working? I work at FDR Institute or I've been working at FDR Institute. Cuánto tiempo has estado trabajando allí? How long? Have you been working? Le voy a agregar there. How long have you? No me va a caber. Been <laughs> working there. There is ahí. Ahí. How long have you been working there? How long have you been working there? I've been working there for 13 years. 13 years. Okay. So how long have you been working there? How long, guys? Es muy común esta pregunta de how long en los tiempos perfectos. Presente perfecto y presente perfecto continuo. Either one. I'm uh, not theirs. There. <laughs> there. Okay. Now, so in this case, guys, how long have you been working there? Sí me preguntaron de theirs, pero voy a poner theirs sin S. Sí son homófonos. Their, de ahí, y their, que es el posesivo, su, de ellos, se pronuncian igual. Their, their, their. All right, so let's do another one. Let's put here, he estado tomando, let's say tea. I have been drinking tea. I have been drinking tea. You have been drinking tea. He has been drinking tea. She has been drinking tea. We have been drinking tea. Now, guys, remember las contracciones también. I've been drinking tea. You've been drinking tea. He's been drinking tea. We've been drinking tea. And they've been. It's so fast. It's so fast. And because we have they've and then been, you don't hear it a lot. They've been drinking tea. They've been drinking tea. Now, um, I work at FDR Institute. It's a school here in Las Vegas, and I teach English here. And I, so, 
Um, where do you work? ¿A dónde trabajas? Where do you work? So, a, a first question would be like, hey, where do you work? I work at FDR Institute. Oh, how long have you been working there? I've been working there for 13 years, right? So that would be like a kind of a common type of conversation there. Okay, so now, now that I said I have been drinking tea, if I want to say, no he estado tomando café, or he estado tomando té, no he estado tomando café, I've been drinking tea. I haven't been drinking coffee lately. I haven't been drinking coffee lately. Lately remembers ultimamente. Ultimamente. So I have been drinking tea. I haven't been drinking coffee lately. I haven't been drinking coffee lately. What about you? Have you been drinking coffee? Guys, so basically when, when, not a question. <laughs> basically when we want to, if we ask a question like, oh, have you been drinking coffee lately? Yeah, I have. What about you? What about you? Or how about you? Either one of those is okay. Coronitas. <laughs> I don't really like beer. It's not that like I can drink it, but I don't really like it. Okay. Now, again, it says, I haven't been drinking coffee lately. Y para preguntar solamente sería, have you been drinking coffee? Have you, or, ¿has estado tomando agua? Have you been drinking water? Have you been drinking water? Have you been drinking orange juice? Have you been? Right? Have you been? Okay, you can you can say and you that would be fine too. In present perfect simple. Uh, so Dharma, this is the present perfect continuous, present perfect continuous or present perfect progressive. But a present perfect and si si es present perfect y no progressive. So los I have y cualquier verbo en el pasado participio. So like I have worked, I have cooked, I have studied, I have learned. Uh, pero aquí con el continuous o progressive tense siempre va a llevar el been y un verbo ing. Now, no significa que no se puede utilizar el been en el presente perfecto. Sí se puede usar. Por ejemplo, I have been sick, he estado enferma. O I have been busy, he estado ocupada. Pero en este tiempo la diferencia es que se le pone, thank you Pablo, se le pone también un verbo en la forma ing después del verbo been, right? Y que siempre se ocupa been. All right, so let's do another one. Let's do, okay, so we asked, ¿Has estado tomando agua? Have you been drinking water? Have you been, sorry guys, no les pregunté, but here we go. Estoy borrando, solo este lado voy a borrar. Okay, have you been drinking water? Y podemos preguntar, ¿Cuánta agua has estado tomando? Hey guys, let's talk about cuánto, right? Have you been drinking water? And I'm thirsty. Maybe that's why I'm thinking about the verb drinking. I'll get some water right now. I am thirsty. Okay. Have you been drinking water? Now, para preguntar cuánta agua has estado tomando, we would say how much. How much water have you... Oops, it's long. It's the tiempo bien largo. Mira, guys. <laughs> how much water have you been drinking? How much water have you been drinking? And you can say, I have been drinking, I don't know, two liters a day. Uh, aunque really in the United States, no usamos mucho en liters, but you know, it just came. <laughs> can we do one for beer? Have you been drinking beer? How often have you been drinking beer? Right, how much beer have you been drinking? And so how often would be like, get tan seguido la frecuencia? How often have you been drinking beer? And you can say, I have been drinking a couple of times a week. I've been drinking on the weekends. And then if I ask how much beer do you drink or how much beer have you been drinking? Oh, I've been drinking a couple beers, right? <laughs> a couple beers. Okay, anyway, well, speaking of water, how much water have you been drinking? So here, let's talk about, we say, yes, I am married. <laughs> I am married, I have, been, I have been married for seven years. I, I don't drink. I don't drink beer. Simple porque utilizo don't, right? Del presente simple. Now, in this case, guys, la razón que utilicé how much y no how many, how much, how many, uh, my pronouns are she, her, she, her. I, yeah, I identify as a woman. All right, so um, the reason that I said how much and not how many is porque how much se utiliza con 
sustantivos no contables. How many se utiliza con sustantivos que sustantivos que se pueden contar? I am the Pastor Jose's sister. Yeah, you know, my brother. Okay. So, I can ask how like how many uh, yeah, how many bottles of water have you been drinking? Right? Or how many ounces? ¿Cuántas onzas? Porque las onzas sí se pueden contar. How many ounces of water have you been drinking? But it's just more common to ask how much water have you been drinking? How much water have you been drinking? Who's that? Oh, hey, what's your name? Uh, Flori. Flori. I don't know. I didn't see. Okay. All right. So anyway, how much water have you been drinking? And you can say, I have been drinking... I don't know how many, 64 ounces a day or eight cups of water a day. No es cierto, guys. I need to drink more water. <laughs> I need to drink more water, guys. It's really important to stay hydrated. Now, and then if we want to ask in the third person singular, instead of have you, let's say has he. Has he been drinking water? How much water has he been drinking? Has she been drinking water? How much water has she been drinking? Now, have they been drinking water? How much water have they been drinking? Okay, it's important, guys. Drink your water. Drink water. I'll drink water, too. Okay, let's switch this one. Let's do another word, another verb. Vamos a ponerle sleeping. Es que, guys, el, el presente perfecto progresivo o el continuo se utiliza, se utiliza para hablar de, like, acciones habituales. Las cosas que hacemos regularmente. Because, because, uh, we use this to talk about, like, a process of time, un tiempo pasado que se une con el tiempo presente y que pasa varias veces. Because we're saying a repeated action with the ing. So, let's say here... I have been sleeping. I'll put here, voy a poner la palabra suficiente. Enough. We're talking about a habit here. He estado durmiendo lo suficiente. So, I have been sleeping enough. Or I've been sleeping enough. You have been sleeping enough. Or you've been sleeping enough. He has been sleeping enough. He's been sleeping enough. Guys, I know que estas letras son raras en inglés because the GH, the GH in English, a veces es muda, a veces es como en laugh, reírse, o cough, toser, pero a veces es uh, g, como en fantasma, ghost. So that's some crazy stuff in English. It's, it's crazy. GH is crazy. So I have been sleeping enough. F. Enough. He has been sleeping enough. He's been sleeping. He's, es la contracción de he has. He's been sleeping enough. She's been sleeping enough. We've been sleeping enough. They've been sleeping enough. So I use the contraction I've, you've, he's, she's, it's, we've, they've. Okay, so, pero si lo dice I have, that's fine. You have, he has, she has, it has, that's okay too. I always say, diga las palabras que, con que se siente más cómoda. Si, for example, yo siempre les digo a mis estudiantes, yo les voy a enseñar las contracciones y siempre, casi siempre, el 90% del tiempo les hablo utilizando las contracciones porque es más común escuchar eso en el día a día aquí en Estados Unidos. But, I tell them, if you feel more comfortable, si se siente más cómodo, decirlo aparte. Si se le facilita más la pronunciación, then just say it like that. Say it how you feel comfortable. But you need to understand it. Because you have to practice your understanding. All right. So here. Okay. Now, the, pero las contracciones que les dije. El de I've, I've. You, como tiembla mi pizarrón. He's, esas son solamente para oraciones afirmativas. Cuando utilizamos I've, you've, he's, 
she's, it's, thank you, we've, they've, eso siempre va a ser para las oraciones afirmativas. Si tengo una oración negativa, entonces sería, thank you, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't, oh my gosh, my friend is watching my live, ah, hi Carolyn, <laughs> so I haven't been, like I haven't been working, or I haven't been waking up early, or I haven't been sleeping enough, so en vez de I've not, no digan I've not, say I haven't, I haven't been sleeping enough, you haven't been sleeping enough, he hasn't been sleeping enough, She hasn't been sleeping enough. She hasn't been sleeping enough. We haven't been sleeping enough. Thank you guys. They haven't been sleeping enough. Now, that is for the negative. Le puse ahí haven't. Y para la tercera persona singular, hasn't. Hasn't. Right? Again, puedes well, decir I have not. Well, this is he, he has not, she has not, but it's more common in American English to use those contractions, right? Okay, now, when we want to ask, cuando queremos preguntar, we ask, have you? Have you been sleeping enough? Have you been sleeping enough? Y puedo preguntar, ¿cuántas horas? ¿Cuántas horas has estado durmiendo? How many hours have you been sleeping? How many hours, ¿cuántas horas? Horas son contables, así que how many y no how much. How many hours have you been sleeping? I have been sleeping seven hours. O well, I've been sleeping seven hours. Been es el pasado participio del verbo cero estar que en este contexto siempre es estado. God, se usa tiempo. ¿En qué contexto usa? Ok. So, this tense, este tiempo, el presente perfecto continuo, se utiliza para hablar de cosas que... Estaba haciendo y sigue haciendo. So it's something that continues to happen. Something que empezó a hacer en el pasado y lo sigue haciendo en su día a día ahora. Por ejemplo, todos los hábitos. He estado haciendo ejercicio. I have been exercising. Oh, no. I, I haven't been exercising. I have been cooking every day. O oh, I haven't been cooking every day. So, he estado cocinando. No he estado cocinando. It's just to talk about... Like habits, los hábitos. Now, hey guys, si no, uh, si no vieron el live del martes, les invito a ver, uh, ver ese video en YouTube. Ya lo subí, el video del martes, que era el presente perfecto. Ya conecté el, el YouTube con el TikTok, so ya fácil, tuk. You can just press there y ir ahí. Porque ahí hablé un poco del his y del she's también, de, de la contracción de his, que puede ser he has y puede ser he is. He has, he's, he is, he's, es la misma contracción. So I, I recommend you go ahead and watch that as a, a little review, as a little review. Voy a borrar esta parte de aquí, guys. Um, he's, it does sound the same. Right, he's, the he is, he's, the he has, se escribe igual, pero cuando es el verbo auxiliar has, uh, que es, es el verbo haber en español, entonces siempre se va a ir junto con un verbo en el pasado participio. So, en este caso, el verbo pasado participio que estamos utilizando es been, pero si fuera el presente perfecto puede ser cualquier verbo. He's worked, he's studied, he's cooked. Que los verbos con ed es el pasado participio de los verbos regulares, pero por ejemplo, ha ido, no, voy a escoger otro porque ese es problemático para mi ejemplo. Ok, so let's say he's taken, él ha tomado, he's taken vitamins, he's taken vitamins, ha tomado vitaminas, he's taking vitamins, he's taking vitamins, está tomando. So just depending on the verb, dependiendo del verbo que sigue después de la contracción, puedes saber si es he is o he has, right? He is, es el verbo to be. He has, es el verbo auxiliar que en español es el verbo haber. So he has taken vitamins, ha tomado vitaminas. He is taking vitamins, está tomando vitaminas, right? Anyway, so there, that's that. Um, let's do another sentence here. Oops. 
Okay. I'm gonna erase, so no way I will not keep you guys sleeping enough, okay? Sleeping enough. <laughs> Today we were talking in my class about the verb have. Uh, have. We were not focused on the verb have, but I was saying, like, do you eat breakfast? Did you eat breakfast? Y que también puedo preguntar, did you have breakfast? So I'm going to put here el verbo have en su uso para decir consumir, como beber o tomar o comer. Okay. Ya no sé, guys, si desayunan. <laughs> Muchos de mis estudiantes no desayunan, no solo toman café con pan. Así yo sí tengo que desayunar. I have to eat breakfast porque si no, uff, pobrecitos de ellos. <laughs> so I have been having breakfast. I have been having breakfast every morning. Este having lo estoy utilizando en vez de decir eating. I have been eating breakfast every morning. He has been eating breakfast every morning. O en vez de eating, having. He has been having breakfast every morning. She has been having breakfast every morning. And just like that, guys, so having or eating, it's the same. It's the same in this context. He has been having breakfast. O negativo, he hasn't been having breakfast. He hasn't been having breakfast. She ha hasn't been having breakfast. I'm not Ashley. My name is Lily. <laughs> Lily. Uh, Lily. So my name is Lily. Hi. <laughs> so if I want to ask you, ¿Has estado desayunando? Remember que en inglés no hay un verbo que es desayunar. No hay un verbo que significa desayunar. Desayunar es eat breakfast o have breakfast. Igual almorzar, eat lunch, have lunch. Uh, we can say cenar, eat dinner, have dinner. So that's just something to remember. <laughs> something That's something to remember. Hi, guys. So if I want to ask, has estado, has estado desayunando? Have you been eating breakfast? Or have you been having breakfast? Voy a borrar esta parte de aquí in three. One. Two, three. Okay. Okay, I have been eating. I'm going to use the verb eating just because maybe you guys understand it better. Okay. So let's do here. ¿Has estado desayunando? Have you been eating breakfast? Have you been eating breakfast? And we can just answer yes, I have. Yes, I have. What about you? Have you been eating breakfast? Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. I've been eating breakfast too. So, have you been eating breakfast? Yes, I have. Or, no, I haven't. I'm just so busy in the mornings. I'm always rushing. Siempre estoy apresurada. Okay, so, have you been eating breakfast? Yes, I have. Or, have you been having breakfast? Yes, I have. Yo sí. Oops, oops, not have having. I have to eat breakfast, um, porque si no, ando grumpy. I get grumpy. Me pongo malhumorada. <laughs> I do not have a Spanish class. Sorry, I, te I teach English. So have you been having breakfast? Have you been eating breakfast? Yes, I have. Or no, I haven't. And then I can ask, what time? ¿A qué hora? What time have you been eating breakfast? What time have you been eating breakfast? I have been eating breakfast, having or eating, you put here eating, I have been eating breakfast at what time? 7.30. I have been eating breakfast at 7.30. What time have you been eating breakfast? Oh, I have been eating breakfast at 10. Now, see, again, si usted me hace la pregunta a mí, yo le puedo contestar, thank you guys, y les puedo decir, what about you? And then you would just say, oh, I've been eating breakfast at 8. I've been eating breakfast at 9. Or you can say, I don't eat breakfast. Eso es, es un simple present. I don't eat breakfast. No desayuno. I don't have breakfast, right? Uh, you could say it like that too. Or, I, I haven't been eating breakfast lately. Now, what time? ¿A qué horas? Y si quiero preguntar, ¿qué has estado desayunando? Voy a poner aquí pequeñito. pequeñito. What have you been eating? 
breakfast. <laughs> what have you been eating for breakfast? What have you been eating for breakfast? I have been eating cereal. <laughs> I don't know. I have been eating cereal. I have been eating toast. I have been eating a bagel. I have been eating oatmeal. Oatmeal, avena, oatmeal. Okay. Uh, lo que les dije, guys, is what about you? ¿Y tú? What about you? Or how about you? Sometimes, you know, it just really depends. Because sometimes it depends on the person. Because sometimes they'll say, you? <laughs> they'll just say, I've been eating cereal. You? Or, and you? It just depends on the person. I usually be like, I've, I've been eating oatmeal. What about you? Or how about you? What about you? What about you? Or how about you? Lo que pasa aquí, guys, es cuando decimos how about you, casi siempre le vamos a quitar, quitar este sonido y solo decir how about you? How about you? <laughs> how about you? So I've been eating, I've been eating, y la, 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 okay? Lo que no quiero que digan es I've been eating for breakfast cereal. I have been eating cereal for breakfast. Porque cereal es el objeto del verbo. Those are little details, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So I have been eating cereal for breakfast. I have been eating eggs for breakfast. I have been eating, I don't know, yogurt for breakfast. I like cold pizza for breakfast sometimes. Maybe that's just the American in me. <laughs> now, uh, yeah, how have you been? How have you been is actually present perfect, uh, but that's good. How have you been? I've been good. I've been good. Yeah, I, I right now, I would say this is probably an intermediate level, but I, yeah, I teach beginners, intermediate, advanced. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Let's change our verb. Let's do... I'm going to erase this one, guys. Do, 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 do. Just this one. Okay. I don't have a dog. I don't have a dog. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Between when the question is with what or how. What significa que and how significa como. But it really just depends porque how se utiliza en diferentes frases. Estoy planeando un video con usos de how. Uh, oh, oh, this is to what about you and how about you. It's the same. If there's no difference. Okay, what was I going to put here? Oh, I don't have a dog. But I always think about having a dog. I have been walking my dog. Okay, I have been walking my dog. Guys, I love dogs so much, but I don't have one. Okay, so let's say I say, I have been walking my dog. I've been walking my dog. You have been walking your dog. You've been walking your dog. Cuando digo you have been, esa es una afirmación. Remember, si queremos preguntar, va a ser have you been. Thank you. Have you been walking your dog? Have you been walking your dog? So, walking my dog is like llevando mi perro a caminar, llevando mi perro a pasear. I don't know how you would say that directly in Spanish. Okay, now... But let's say, I have been walking my dog at the park. I have been walking my dog at the park. He has been walking his dog at the park. My dog has been walking me. That's so funny. Um, I had a dog. I had a dog before that she would get so excited. You see, man, I love us. Some dogs, they get so excited when they go for walks. <laughs> have you been walking your dog at the park? Have you been walking your dog? Where have you been walking your dog? Oh, I have been walking my dog at the park. Or I have been walking my dog around the block. Around the block. Or around my neighborhood. Around. Around. All right. I saw a sentence. I have been thinking about how... Okay, Alicia, that was so good. That was really, really good. I'm just going to do a little tweak. Voy a borrar esa parte de aquí, guys. Now, um, one little tweak. Cuando digo tweak, es como un cambiecito, un cambiecito, un detallito. So, I have been thinking about, that was so good. Okay. I have been thinking about 
Perfect. Hasta aquí vamos perfecto. Now, lo que pasó aquí, que puso can I. Now, y, y tiene sentido porque usualmente cuando estamos en, en una pregunta, we'll say like can I. Pero como aquí no es una pregunta, even aunque tengamos aquí la palabra how, no se está preguntando. So, se pone how I can. Improve my English. It's always good. It's always good to think about that, right? To think, what can I do? ¿Qué puedo hacer para mejorar mi inglés? Pero aquí, I have been thinking about, he estado pensando en, how I can improve my English. I have been thinking, I have been thinking about how I can improve my English. Now, la palabra can, cuando lo digo así, I can, it's slow, right? Pero si lo digo rápido, how I can improve, how I can improve. Este se va a reducir, how I can improve my English. I have been thinking about how I can improve my English. It's good to think about, guys. It's good to think about those things. Like, what can you do? ¿Qué cosas puedes hacer para mejorar? This is what I say. Fill your life with English. Music, movies, books, podcasts, audiolibros también, audiobooks. It's so good, guys. Make friends that speak English, too. Find some friends. If you go to church, go to church in English. If you go to the gym, go to a class all the time. Vaya a una clase donde puedas conocer a personas. Y si vas regularmente, se empieza todo por un hello. Hi, how are you? Small talk. Make small talk. Small talk is like esas conversaciones pequeñitas. Y ya de ahí haces amistades. You make friends. And then you can talk more comfortably. But it's all about deciding, tomar la decisión de practicar y no tener pena porque sí guys es bien es bien difícil al principio porque uno uno se puede se puede, le puede entrar el pánico y la ansiedad that's normal uh, I would just say the more you practice the more you practice the better you get so más entre más práctica mejor guys just keep practicing don't get scared don't get nervous I, it's easier said than done. Es más fácil decir lo que hacerlo, pero just try. Just try it. Ooh, my phone is frozen. Okay, anyway, let's continue. All right, let's do another sentence where I'm walking my dog. And we'll do... Um, let me see. I have been feeling... I have been feeling... Y aquí, guys, cualquier sentimiento. I have been feeling great. I have been feeling wonderful. Let's be optimistic for a second. I have been feeling motivated, motivada. I have been feeling excited, emocionada. I have been feeling optimistic, optimista, right? Yeah, now let's get to the negative. Ahora lo pesimismo. I have been feeling tired, cansada. I have been feeling exhausted, Agotada. Exhausted is like saying super tired. Super, very, very, very tired. I have been feeling overwhelmed. Abrumada. So like, right? I have been feeling uh, sad, triste. I have been feeling blue. Blue is el color azul, pero también lo utilizamos para decir triste. I have been feeling blue. Or I, feel, I have been feeling so down, right? I have been feeling so down. You're welcome, guys. Okay, I'm going to raise here. So I can ask, like, have you been feeling okay? Today I saw one of my students, uh, I saw one of my students and I was like, hey, are you okay? Uh, are you okay? Estás bien? How have you been feeling? ¿Cómo te has estado sintiendo? Because I saw him and he looked really tired. He looked really tired today. And I've been thinking, I wonder if he's okay. So I'll be racing here, guys. How have you been feeling? Have you been feeling okay? Have you been feeling all right? All right, all right, all right. Okay, have you been feeling okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, yeah, okay. Se puede escribir Oh, I, I almost always lo pongo así, okay, 
entero O K A Y. Pero, you know, si lo pones O y K, la letra O y la letra K, that's okay too. That's okay. Have you been feeling okay? Have you been feeling okay? ¿Cómo te has estado sintiendo? How have you been feeling? How have you been feeling? Les enseñé el martes una pregunta también, que a veces preguntamos, like, how you been? ¿Cómo has estado? How have you been? But I think for me and me and mi persona, cuando yo quiero saber, like, a veces, you know, it's just like polite, solo por ser cortés. How you been? Good. You? Yeah, se acabó. How you been? Good. You? ¿Cómo has estado? Pero cuando quiero realmente saber y si realmente quiero una respuesta, lo digo más lento. How have you been feeling? How have you been feeling? Guys, it's a medium, and this, this one is intermediate level, so no los voy a decir super slowly, okay? Now, <laughs> have you been feeling okay? ¿Te has estado sintiendo bien? How have you been feeling? ¿Cómo te has estado sintiendo? And I would say, I have been feeling, or I've been feeling, okay. <laughs> I've been feeling pretty good. Uh, I've been feeling pretty good. Not great, but you know. And I would give my answer. Okay, I'm erasing this part now. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's go through he. He has been. El ha estado. He has been feeling tired. Or he has been feeling stressed out. He has been feeling grumpy. Grumpy. So I'm like, it's grumpy. Grumpy is like the mal humor, mal humorado, right? Se ha estado sintiendo. So when we ask, how are you doing? It's just now. How are you? How are you doing? Okay. Good para los amigos, pero más correcto is how have you been doing? Hey, friend. How have you been feeling? Is como te has estado sintiendo? How have you been doing? That's okay, too. That's another option. Pero no es que es más correcto. It's just a different way to say it. If these are the things, guys. Sometimes nos quedamos que una forma es, es lo correcto and that's it. <laughs> but how have you been doing? How have you been feeling? Both are okay. Cuando yo quiero saber realmente cómo están mis amigos, les pregunto con feeling. But that's because I'm a very sensitive person. Soy muy sensible and like I really want to know. Uh, I have always been feeling grumpy. Okay. All right. Now, let's do here another phrase. Uh, let's put here... Ahorrando. I have been saving money. I have been saving money. Now, si, si he estado ahorrando dinero para comprar un carro, I have been saving money. Guys, we have para que sea two y para four. Two and four. Cuando decimos para delante de un verbo, we say two. Para comprar un carro, to buy a car. I have been saving money to buy a car. I have been saving money to buy a car. Now, for, no es correcto decir for buying. It's to buy a car. Si quiero utilizar for, puedo utilizar for también, pero le quitaría el verbo y pondría solo for a car. I have been saving money to buy a car. I have been saving money to buy a car. I have been saving money for a car. Or for a car. Okay, now, over here. Si quiero decir en otro sujeto, you have been saving money to buy a car. You've been saving money for a car. He has been saving money for a car. He's been saving money for a car. Now, ya que si quiero decir no ha estado ahorrando dinero, Let's say, yo no he estado ahorrando dinero. I haven't been saving money. I haven't been saving money. No, no for buying, guys. No for buying. Porque, look, the thing is, when we say para, we can say para comprar, to buy. To buy. Y si no, para un carro, for a car. For a car. No for buying. Si for buying no se utiliza así. Alright, I can say thank you. Si quiero decir gracias por comprarme almuerzo. Thank you for buying me lunch. <laughs> right? Thank you.
you for buying me a coffee, pero en esta oración no. Oh, I have been saving money for my son's university. Very good. Okay, so let's say, have you been saving money? Rocky. Have you been saving money? Have you been saving money? Yes, I have. Or no, no, I haven't. If I want to ask, si quiero preguntar con he, ¿cómo sería, guys, si quieres preguntar, él ha estado ahorrando dinero? ¿Cómo sería esa pregunta? ¿Cómo sería la pregunta? ¿Él ha estado, él ha estado ahorrando dinero? Ok. Go ahead, guys. Ok, Jose, that's so good. Very good, Lisette. Very good. Cynthia, that's really good. So, pero la pregunta, I haven't studied English for two years. That's great. Ok. Hey, Joel, I have been. I have been o oh, I've been. Le falta el been ahí. Okay, he have has ooh nano. So has he been? Que lagos, that's good. Uvita, solo que en pregunta sería has he y con el ing. All right. So si vamos a preguntar, él ha estado ahorrando dinero. Voy a borrar aquí, guys. Él ha estado ahorrando dinero. So tenemos aquí la oración, ¿no? He has been saving money. Para preguntar iría el verbo auxiliar antes del sujeto. ¿Él ha estado ahorrando dinero? Has he been saving money? Has he been saving money? Uh, casi no ocupo. Guys, vi una pregunta acerca de... Ok. Has he been? All right. Is he have been saving money? Uh, Wanda. So, no. It's he has. He has es para afirmar con he. He has been saving money. Y para preguntar, has he been saving money? Aquí no se utiliza is, right? Pero has he. So si afirmamos, if we make a sentence, he has. If we make a question, has he, right? So ella ha estado, she has been saving money. Y en pregunta, has she been saving money? Has she been saving money? Entonces, guys, la oración en ellos. Ellos han estado ahorrando dinero. Ellos han estado, ha estado ahorrando dinero. They have been saving money. ¿Cómo sería la pregunta? ¿Han estado ahorrando dinero? Con sujeto they. ¿Cómo sería la pregunta? ¿Ellos han estado ahorrando dinero? Very good, Jose. Very good. Ok. So... Been es el pasado participio del verbo ser o estar, que en estas oraciones es estado. Puede ser sido también, pero aquí es estado. Very good, Master C. Sí. Very good, Jimena. Oh, Jimena, actually, le faltó el been. Claudia, very good, very good. Y Gabriel, ok. Awesome, guys. Have they, have they been saving money? Ok. Saving, guys, tiene varios significados. Save puede ser, save, el verbo saving, puede ser ahorrando, puede ser guardando, puede ser salvando. Um, but, alguien preguntó de get. En estas oraciones no utilizaríamos el get. Por, <laughs> hay tantos usos de get, pero aquí no. So, get, tengo varios videos acerca de get in, me, in my channel there. So, I recommend you go ahead and look for them. But, have you been saving money? Has he been saving money? Has she been saving money? Have they been saving money? Esa es la pregunta de sí o no. Cuando comenzamos una pregunta con el verbo auxiliar, es porque es una pregunta de sí o no. Cuando lleva... No va, do or does. Um, that is a great question. Suri, Suri Santorelli. Las palabras do y does son verbos auxiliares que solo se utilizan en el tiempo presente simple. So, este es otro tiempo gramatical. Aquí no entra nada de do o does, nada de did. Tampoco are. Okay. So, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, these are the present perfect progressive. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, estas preguntas son de sí o no. Si quiero preguntar otras preguntas... Por ejemplo, ¿por qué? Why? Todavía tenemos que seguir la gramática que hemos utilizado para formar la pregunta de sí o no. So, ¿has estado ahorrando dinero? Have you been saving money? ¿Por qué? 
Why have you been saving money? Why has he been saving money? ¿Por qué? Why has she been saving money? O ellos, why have they been saving money? Now, I can say, they have been saving money to buy a house. Or they have been saving money to buy a car, right? Or just because I want to buy a car, <laughs> that's good too. Because I want to buy a new car, because I want to buy a house. All right. Now, honestly, honestly, si, si utilizo because, probablemente no pondría la primer parte. Like, why have you been saving money? ¿Por qué? Because I want to buy a car. Because I want to buy a car. Now, I will tell you que en las escuelas nos dicen que no comencemos las oraciones con because, que no es una oración completa, empezar con because, pero lo que pasa es que eso es para la escritura. Para la escritura uh, no es muy formal empezar una oración de because, pero en lo hablado sí, right? <laughs> exactly, Corey. But because I want to buy a car. El, I want to. Because I want to buy a car. Que parece iguana, ¿no? Iguana. I wanna. Now, honestly, yo no escribo wanna. Uh, no me gusta escribirlo, pero no te voy a mentir si lo digo. <laughs> I want to buy a car. Uh, so, I want to. Cuando decimos I want to, I would say uh, I wanna. How many money has he been saving to buy a car? I would ask, no, no. How much money? How much money has he been saving? It was the how many money, which is crazy, right? Porque decimos, pero el dinero es contable. Por el dinero es contable. <laughs> to me, I have been money. Don't forget saving. El dinero es contable, no? Pero la palabra money no es un sustantivo contable. Si se fijan, no decimos money y monies, no decimos one money, two money, three money, ¿no? No se dice así. Entonces el sustantivo no es contable y por eso decimos how much money y no how many money. Right? So many is for countable nouns. And money. So aunque el dinero se cuenta, el sustantivo money no es un sustantivo contable. Porque no decimos one money, two money, three money, right? No se dice así. So think about it like that. Si no se puede decir, por ejemplo, agua. Agua no es contable. No se dice one water, two waters, three waters, right? Igual, igual con money. We don't say one money, two money, three money. We say one dollar, two dollars, three dollars. But money is not How many dollars? I mean, lógicamente es correcto. <laughs> lógicamente es correcto, pero no se diría así, right? <laughs> that's, that's the thing. How much money? How much money? How much money have you been saving? So how, this is a great question. How much money have you been saving? Okay. Puedo enseñar inglés. Hey, Frey, of course not. Oh, claro que no puedo enseñar. English Australian, no soy Australiana. That's crazy. <laughs> Guys, you, ¿saben lo que hago yo? Yo sigo a maestros de español porque English is my first language. So siempre yo quiero mejorar mi español. Lo practico todos los días. Uh, no, one dollar es un dólar. One dollar es un dólar. Money is dinero. It's not, right? I'm from the United States. I, have, I am from the United States. Pero... I, you know, my family is from Honduras. Mi familia sí es de Honduras, pero inglés es mi primer idioma. Así que yo sigo a maestros de español de varios países. Varios países porque, okay, um, I think it's important to understand different accents. Uh, I think it's important to understand different ac accents. And I love, love, love Spanish. I do. I really love it. And I think it's really important to understand that that all these language, all these countries speak Spanish differently. Uh, se habla diferente, igual con el inglés. Pues, hi, San Benito from Honduras, nice. Yeah, I was born in the U.S. So f for you guys, I am going to teach you American English. But so I cannot teach you British English. I cannot teach you UK English. I cannot teach you Scottish English. I cannot teach you Australian English. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I practice it every day. En la escuela lo practico todos los días. I, but you know, <laughs> I, I try to improve my Spanish daily. Now, 
If I want to ask, entonces, ¿cuánto dinero has estado ahorrando? Esto es bueno cuando estás planeando un presupuesto, ¿no? How much money, or just how much, have you been saving? Si no digo money, that's okay too, because it's implicit. Si estamos hablando de, like, how much have you been saving? I understand that we're talking about money, and you probably understand too. How much have you been saving? So, lo que hay, cuando preguntamos how much, el money se va a quitar, se podría poner aquí, pero no es necesario. How much money have you been saving? And you can say, I have been saving $50 a week. I have been saving $25 a week. I have been saving, y así, he estado ahorrando. He estado ahorrando. Él ha estado ahorrando. Si quiero preguntar ellos cuánto han estado ahorrando, how much money have they been saving? How much money have they been saving? They have been saving $60 a week, or they have been saving $200 a month, right? Good, very good. Okay, so how much money has he been saving? He, he has been saving $25 a week. A week. Esto también es a la semana, a week. A week. El artículo A. A la semana, a week. Al mes, a month. Es, yo sé que aquí lo ven y piensan, piensan una semana y un mes, pero cuando quiero decir he estado ahorrando dinero al, a la semana, I have been saving $20 a week. I have been saving $200 a month. For example, there. Okay? All right, guys. Now, me están preguntando acerca del YouTube. Si se fijan, les puse el video en YouTube. <laughs> Lo puse en YouTube. Weekend significa fin de semana. Fin de semana. So I can tell you guys, have a great weekend. Have a great... You know, you could say per week. Uh, you can say per week. I just think a week just rolls faster. You can say it like that too. That's okay. That's correct. Pero este es... Va más rápido. It's just a week. A week. All right. All right, guys. So, the, today we were looking at the present perfect progressive. I'm thinking, ¿qué miraremos next Tuesday? What should we study? Enseño en FDR Institute. FDR Institute es una escuela en Las Vegas cerca de la Torre Estratosfera que ahora se llama Strat. Okay. Para aprender inglés es buscar personas... Buscar personas que hablan inglés, guys. Try to fill your life with English. Hay que. You have to listen to English. TV. Movies. Videos. Everything in English, guys. Get more English in your life. Si estás soltero, boyfriend. Girlfriend. <laughs> Let's speak English. Si no, amigos. It's fine. Just friends. Just friends. If you're married, just that. Okay. In and on. Uh, in significa adentro. In significa adentro. On significa sobre. I have some videos. Si sí, tengo algunos videos ahí en mi uh, pinned arriba de en my uh, videos. But I will say, guys, um, again, mi YouTube es FDR Institute. Está conectado con mi my, uh, page aquí en TikTok. Ahí pueden apoyar el botón de, que es el triangulito. And you can look at it there. Okay. Tengo videos acerca de in, on, at. Tengo videos de only and just. En YouTube, guys, see, you know right here, si van a mi página aquí, you press the button, y ahí arribita está el botón de, de, para, you know, like, seguir y eso. Ahí mismo está el botón para YouTube. Right? So, like that. Okay. All right, guys. Have a good night. God bless you. Take care. Thank you for coming. Por favor, síganme. Y los martes y jueves hago los en vivos. Y los subo para los que no pueden o llegan tarde, los subo al YouTube para verlos. All right? Los martes y jueves solamente. Y de 7 y media, 8 y media, hora Las Vegas. Ahorita aquí en Las Vegas ya son las 8 y media. So, all right, guys. Have a good night. God bless you. Take care. Thank you for coming. See you guys on Tuesday.